Hello everybody and welcome to our fourth lecture on projections and datums. So far we've covered projections, what they are and why you choose one over the other. We've talked about datums and geographic coordinate systems. So now let's talk about how to actually use these things in ArcGIS. So start off, how do we work with projections in ArcGIS? And there's two scenarios in which this question comes into play. First, just when you're viewing data, we choose a projection that lets us create nice looking and convincing maps. Now another scenario is when we're analyzing the data. In this case, we care more about a projection that lets us calculate accurate measures. Now, we have some important points here to consider. First off, all spatial data are in some coordinate system. Second, all maps are in some coordinate system. And a neat thing about ArcGIS is that these coordinate systems do not have to be the same. So here's a typical scenario. We have data here in four different coordinate systems. We have fire severity that's in UTM zone 12. We have roads and state boundaries that are in lat long coordinates. We got this background imagery that's in uh, what we call web mercator coordinates and we have rivers in latitude longitude coordinates. And ArcGIS can show them to you all together, which is really pretty cool. Understand that the fact that these are in different coordinate systems means that if you picked those things apart and looked at each individual vertex, looked at the coordinates of each vertex, the rivers and the roads, since they're in latitude longitude, they'd all have a X value of about negative 109 and a Y value of around 34. The fire severity, that's in UTM zone 12, that means their X values would be around 650,000, the Y around 3.7 million. Then the, the Web Mercator data, that background imagery, their X value is roughly 12 million while their Y value is around 3.7 million. So these are radically different coordinate systems and yet ArcMap is able to bring them all together and show them on top of each other. Well, this is pretty neat. GIS systems didn't used to be able to do this. Now, how do you know what coordinate system your data are actually in? It's pretty easy to do in ArcGIS. We just look at the layer properties of a particular layer. So here, if we're curious what the coordinate system of the wall of fire boundary is, we can just open up the wall of fire frame here. Here's the layer. We can right click on it and go to properties or another way we can just double click on it. Either one opens up the layer properties. Go to the source tab scroll down to the bottom to spatial reference and here we go and here we see that uh, the fire boundary is in a projected coordinate system the north american datum 1983 utm zone 12 north now notice if you remember all projected coordinate systems are projected from some geographic coordinate system and we often want to know what that geographic coordinate system is. So if we scroll down a little bit further in this list we'll find out that this particular coordinate system is projected from NAD83. Okay now let's take a look at another uh, of the layers say the hill shade layer, double click on it to open the properties, run to spatial reference. We see that this layer is also in UTM zone 12 from NAD83. Try another one, local roads, let's take a look at that. Source, come down to spatial reference. Now this layer is the data set actually is in WGS 1984 and notice that this time it just says geographic coordinate system. There's no information here describing a projected coordinate system. That means that these data actually are in latitude long longitude coordinates. If we looked at the vertices of any of those particular polylines, we'd, we'd see that the numbers in there are in latitude longitude values. So that's how you find out the coordinate system of a particular layer. Now remember the map itself can be an entirely different coordinate system. So how do we find out what the map coordinate system is? Now notice that this layout has three different maps in it. We have the wall of fire, we have a zoom in on Arizona and New Mexico, and then we have another map that shows the general western United States. And we can pretty easily tell that at least two of these have different coordinate systems just from the way the Arizona and New Mexico are shaped. So what coordinate system are these map frames in? 
we've talked about the data, but what is the actual coordinate system of the map itself? So let's start with the wallow fire, the, the zoomed in one right here. We can find it in the properties of the map frame. You could get it either from the map itself. You can come in here and go to properties. That would work. You can also get it from the layout here by opening up the wallow fire in the layout uh, pane here. Just right clicking on wallow fire or you know, right clicking, go to properties or double click. That'll both get you to the properties. Now in the coordinate system tab, we'll, we can see here that this map frame happens to be in NAT83 UTM zone 12, just like the data set on the wall of fire boundary itself. Okay, now how about, how about this uh, small scale map that shows the Western United States? That is this data frame here, United States data frame. We can just write, or we'll just double click on it and go to the properties. This coordinate system, this map is in USA contiguous Albers Equal Area Conic. Okay, and how about this map right here of just Arizona and New Mexico? Let's open up properties for that. We see that that map is in NAT83 State Plain, Arizona East. Now this is pretty common. You often have a little inset map that helps you sort of place yourself on the overall landscape, help people know where they are. And usually you pick a coordinate system that just looks good for that. And notice that in the same map properties window, it's also really easy to change the coordinate system of the map itself. Now let's jump back to the the uh, United States. We'll double click on it to go to the map properties. Here we are at our coordinate system. Well, right now we know it's in this coordinate system, but we can and change it. Let's change it to sinusoidal. So we just click OK on that, and we'll see the coordinate system change pretty dramatically. And it's that easy to change the coordinate system of a map. Sinusoidal is good for equal area, but boy, it can twist and warp uh, the polygons quite a bit. So that's how you figure out what coordinate system your map is in and how you set it. Now remember, as you change these coordinate systems, this only really applies to how you view the data. This is not affecting your analysis at all. But you do have an awful lot of choice when it comes to what coordinate system you want to view it in. So let's take a look at a few. And by the way, speaking of map coordinate systems, what coordinate system do you suppose a map starts with when you first add it to your ArcGIS project? It's not really a simple answer and you have some flexibility about the coordinate system you want. But if I go to insert and make a new map in this project, go check the coordinate system. I'm just going to go to properties. Coordinate system is set to be WGIS 1984 Web Mercator. Now, why is that? Well, in the default installation of ArcGIS Pro, and this is before you've changed any of the program options, ArcGIS Pro will automatically add one of the Esri base maps to any new map, and it's going to assign the map coordinate system to be the coordinate system of those base maps. That's Web Mercator, as we just saw. You may or may not like this behavior. Now you have the option to choose the base map you want to automatically load, or even choose none at all. That's how I've set my options to be. That's why I don't see a base map here when I made the new map. You also have the option to set the default coordinate system. So for example, if we go to the Project tab, click down on Options, then come to the Map and Scene section. Here we can choose the base map that we want to appear in any new map. So if I chose custom base map and I picked uh, imagery or any of the standard Esri base maps, I would be able to make this show up in any new map that came up. Now, like I said, I don't like to have them throw in a map. I, I like to start with a blank screen. Now, as for the spatial reference, here you can choose the coordinate system that you want the new map to have. I usually use the spatial reference of the first operational layer, meaning the first time I add a data set to the map, it'll, the map will just take on the coordinate system of that data set. And, uh, and that, that's, that's my preference, but you can set it to be any specific coordinate system you want. 
Now, surprisingly, you don't have the option to set this coordinate system to be none of the above. And this behavior is new with ArcGIS Pro. Back in the days of ArcMap and even ArcView, you had the option to just leave the coordinate system as a generic, planar, Cartesian coordinate system. It's usually referred to as unknown or even no coordinate system, as you see in this image of an ArcMap coordinate system. The nice thing was you could use it to work with local coordinate systems that weren't anchored to the planet in any way. And let me just explain what I mean by that. We're not going to use local coordinate systems in this class, but they do exist, especially in engineering projects. Maybe you're going to put in a housing development or build some, some structure somewhere, and you'll start with some control point. This will be your zero point. You pound a stake in the ground. This is where everything is measured from. And then 10 meters north of that, you'll put a, a wall. And 20 meters north of that, you'll put a door. So the, the wall's coordinates are based out from that central control point. They're not referenced to the globe as a whole. They're not, they're, they're, there's no connection to any latitude longitude system. It's purely a local system. Like I said, you see this kind of thing a lot in engineering projects. Local coordinate systems also come into play in certain ecological studies, such as Dr. Margaret Moore's long-term maps of these one square meter quadrats. In this case, she's observing the change of grass and forb species over time, seeing how the communities evolve. Plants within these quadrats are mapped only in terms of their position within a generic one square meter frame, and all XY coordinates range between zero and one. We also see these local coordinate systems when we're mapping phenomena within well-known frames, such as the movements of football players within a football field. Positions in this example are recorded in terms of distance in yards from the 50-yard line or from one of the end zones. And you can even conduct GIS within graph space, such as spatially constructing a good flow chart. Esri's model builder does this when you click the auto arrange button. So, for example, you have all these, these functions scattered through your model builder. You want to make them line up nice and clean. You hit the auto layout and it just organizes them for you. And this is definitely a GIS function. Anyway, let's add a base map to our map. Now, you can do this with the standard base map function, which is right up here. But I kind of like the National Geographic map service that we connected to back in the data types lecture. So I'm going to add that one. And if you need a refresher on how to load that one, uh, go back and take a look at lab exercise 10 in the data types lab. Now we can get to it by hitting the add data button. If you remember, we set up the ArcGIS uh, base map server to be one of the servers in all new projects. And here it is. We open that up, and here's National Geographic. So I'm just going to pop that in there. And here it is, and we can quickly confirm that the map coordinate system is still Web Mercator by opening up the map properties here. And see here, it's a Web Mercator. And if we open up the details of this coordinate system right here, we see that uh, the geographic coordinate system that it is projected from is WGS 1984. All right, so we want to talk about all the options we have for coordinate systems. If you, if you look in the geographic coordinate systems, you see all these different options. These are all the different lat-long variations you have available to you. You can also set it, your map to be in any projected coordinate system. It does not have to be in the coordinate system of that data set that we just added. You know, earlier, I showed you sinusoidal. We can do that again see what the globe looks like in the sinusoidal coordinate system. So we've changed our data frame coordinate system that easy. Now there's lots of these that are kind of fun to play with. I really like one called the world from space. I think I mentioned that before. And remember, this is the orthographic projection. It even says it's orthographic here. We just hit apply. Okay, the world from space. Zoom to the full extent. And that's how easy it is to choose from the set of coordinate systems that are available to you. Now, sometimes you want to change the properties of these coordinate systems, and that's fairly easy to do. You just right click on it, go to copy and modify. And here you can set the different parameters you want for the coordinate system. Basically changes where the projection surface intersects the planet. Now, in this case, 
the default orthographic for some reason is set to be negative 72 degrees longitude, 42 degrees latitude. Looks like it's centered roughly on New York City. We can change this to Flagstaff, negative 115, uh, latitude of about 35. Hit apply. And it rotates it to be centered on Flagstaff. So any of these coordinate systems can be modified and it's fairly easy to do. And you might notice as you're searching through the coordinate systems, trying to pick the one you're, you're going to settle on, uh, if you start looking on, looking through them, you might notice that several of them have things like equal area in the name, conformal in the name. So you kind of get a clue on what the purpose of it is. So in equidistant, we can choose this if we want to do true distances. The conformal will probably look best. Equal areas are better for analyzing sizes. And another neat feature is uh, suppose you want to set the coordinate system of your map to be equal to one of the coordinate systems of the data that you have in that map. So, for example, uh, suppose you know I have the National Geographic map here, uh, and we know we remember that that was in the Web Mercator coordinate system. There's actually an easy way to set our map to be equal to Web Mercator when you have a layer that has the data in Web Mercator or you know, any coordinate system. What you do is you go into the Layers option. This will show you all the coordinate systems that are currently available amongst all the data sets that are currently loaded in your map. Right now we only have one layer and we happen to know it's Web Mercator. We can click this little triangle here and it'll tell us all the data sets in our map that are in this coordinate system. So if we had six or seven of them here, and they're all in Web Mercator, uh, we'd see Web Mercator here, and then six or seven layers listed beneath it. But in the meantime, if I want to go with Web Mercator, all I have to do is select it here, hit OK, and it switches me back to Web Mercator. Okay, as we've been seeing, uh, ArcGIS does a great job at switching around between projected coordinate systems. It's actually pretty easy. It's a simple mathematical transformation. ArcGIS will do it automatically for you in your map. And ArcGIS provides several easy tools to reproject data layers into new projections. So, for example, if your data are in geographic coordinates, they can easily be shown on a map in UTM coordinates. All of this works really well. Now, surprisingly, switching around between different geographic coordinate systems is much more complicated. So suppose we want to project our data into a new projected coordinate system that's based on a different underlying geographic coordinate system. And let's just be clear on what this means. When we're transforming from one geographic coordinate system to another, we're moving from one datum to another. We're changing spheroids. We're changing the underlying model for the shape of the Earth. So it's fairly complicated to figure out how to move the coordinate from one of these models of the planet to another. But that's what it means to change a geographic coordinate system. And for example, we have data that's in UTM zone 12, but that's projected out from the NAD 1927 datum. And we want to project it into UTM zone 12 based on the WGS84 datum. So they're both the same projection and they're both projecting into the same projected coordinate system, but they're projecting out from two different underlying geographic coordinate systems. This causes ArcGIS trouble. Another scenario is when you want to add new data to your map, but your map might be set to something like a WGS84 or any projection that is projected out from WGS84, and you add data that comes from NAD83. Well, you're dealing with a conflicting geographic coordinate system, and again, ArcGIS has trouble with this. Turns out there's no single simple mathematical transformation. Therefore, ArcGIS does not do it automatically. This is different than the projections. Remember, ArcGIS handles projection changes just fine. It's these underlying geographic coordinate systems that give it grief. So the issue is that ArcGIS actually has many possible transformations that you can choose from. And each option is designed to work better in a particular area. So, for example, if you want to convert between NAD83 and WGS84, there might be a dozen different methods that ArcGIS knows about, and ArcGIS needs you to tell it which one to pick. Now, as of ArcGIS 10.1, ArcGIS does try to help. 
It tries to pick the best possible transformation for you. When it shows you the list of options, it'll pop its recommendation up to the top. Now, this is easy to fool, unfortunately, but it's still a lot better than it used to be. Esri used to provide this document, uh, Geographic Transformations PDF, to help you choose a transformation that would be appropriate for your area. Uh, they used to give this out when you installed ArcMap. This was before ArcGIS Pro, and they don't seem to be uh, providing it anymore for some reason. So I've attached a copy of it to your Documents folder in the Class Data folder. If all else fails, you can make your own transformation. You can set up the rules to convert between two different uh, geographic coordinate systems. But this, this requires a pretty solid understanding of the mathematical functions that are going on. And that's not that easy. So hopefully you never have to deal with this. Or if you do, it's because you want to and you're just having fun with it. Now, for example, here we have a scenario. Your map is in UTM Zone 12. And this UTM Zone 12 is projected out from the NAD 83, the North American Datum 1983 Geographic Coordinate System. Now you have data that's also in UTM Zone 12, but your data is projected from the North American Datum 1927 Geographic Coordinate System. So you need to tell ArcGIS which of several possible methods to use to convert between NAD 27 and NAD 83. And there's usually several options to choose from. It's not always easy to know which is the best option. And like I said, each option works better in some particular region. So here's how you do it. Okay, here we have a map of the Flagstaff area. We have one layer in the map, this National Geographic World Map. Let's take a look. It is in Web Mercator coordinates projected from WGS 1984. So it's based on the WGS 1984 geographic coordinate system. The map itself is in the UTM Zone 12 coordinates projected from NAD 1983. So we're already dealing with two different geographic coordinate systems. Now, how do I make these two geographic coordinate systems line up? Well, I hit the Transformations button. And it opens up this little window that takes a little practice to understand. Okay, now we see two geographic coordinate systems in this window. We have WGS84 over here, NAD83 over here. On the right is the map coordinate system. So this isn't saying that the map is in the NAD83 geographic coordinate system. It could be that, but it could also mean that it is in some projected coordinate system that is projected from NAD83. On the left, this is, this is telling us that at least one data set in the map or something about that map also is involving the WGS 1984 geographic coordinate system. Again, it could be WGS 84 directly or it could be some projected coordinate system that is projected from WGS 84. If you remember the National Geographic World Map, this is in a projected coordinate system called a Web Mercator, which is projected from WGS 84. The map itself, if you recall, is in UTM Zone 12, projected from NAD 83. Now, in between these, this little drop-down list shows all the transformations that ArcGIS knows of that can convert between WGS 84 and NAD 83. You see there are quite a few, and it becomes your responsibility to pick the correct one. As of ArcMap 10.1, Esri did make this a little bit easier. It used to be that they would list these in alphabetical order and we had to pick one, and that, that was just ridiculous. Now they have sorted them in order of appropriateness to your location. So right now it's, it's assuming that we're in the Flagstaff area, I hope, and it is picking this option because that is most appropriate for the Flagstaff area. Now this option would be more appropriate for somewhere else, and etc. Uh, this one apparently is designed for Montana and Idaho, so uh, wouldn't be so good for Flagstaff. But anyway, this is rising to the top of the list, so we would generally go with the, this first one. Now, not always, and I'm going to show you how to look these things up, but uh, we can often rely on this to be the most accurate. So I have now picked this transformation which is designed to transform between WGS84 and NAD83, 
And when I set this, I will hit OK. And now the map will correctly line up between WGS-84 and NAD-83. Now I'm going to add the Coconino National Forest, just so I have the boundary here. The Coconino National Forest boundary is in UTM Zone 12, projected from WGS-84. This is the WGS-84 is what matters when we're concerned about uh, geographic transformations. So we have now we have data in WGS-84, but we already have the transformation set so that ArcMap knows how we want to transform between WGS-84 and NAD-83. Okay, let's add another data set. I, I know I have some data up here from NAD-27. Happen to have an old fire boundary that is is I know it's in NAD 27 coordinates. So I add that in. Let's open the tool to set the map transformations again. It's in the map properties transformation. And you'll see that we now have a second transformation that's been added to the list. We still have this original one to transform between WGS 84 and NAD 83 using this particular transformation. But since we added data that comes from NAD 27, well, now we have to transform between NAD27 and NAD83, and ArcGIS is suggesting this top one here, this NADCon, and that's, that's generally a pretty good one. And just to reiterate, uh, you might notice again that there are no projected coordinate systems being shown in this window here. This window has nothing to do with projected coordinate systems. It only cares about the underlying geographic coordinate systems. Now we just hit OK to close this window, and now ArcGIS is correctly lining up three different data sets from three different geographic coordinate systems. And that's all there is to it. Okay, now a couple more quick points on these transformations. You know, our, uh, Esri gives you all these transformations to choose from, and it's kind of up to you to pick the one that you think is appropriate. It's nice that they put one at the top, and that does help. But suppose you do want to look them up. Uh, you, you're not sure that the one that they selected is best. And really think about this. How, how does Esri determine that that one is best? Uh, it, it's got to be based on your current location, but how does it really know what your current location is? It can make a guess based on where you're zoomed into or based on the data sets you have loaded. But sometimes you have global data sets and you're zoomed to the world. And so how will Esri know then that you need the transformation that's appropriate for Flagstaff? I actually asked the person in charge of these uh, projections and datums at Esri one time, and she told me that they do have an algorithm, but the algorithm is, quote, easy to fool. So don't rely on it. Sometimes you want to look them up and see which one might be appropriate, and so this is how you do it. You go find this document called Geographic Transformations PDF, and right now it's in your Documents folder. It looks like this. Notice that, uh, if you remember in our previous demonstration, ArcGIS suggested this, this particular transformation to transform between WGS-84 and NAD-83. Well, we can look it up, and we can see that uh, this particular one is designed for the USA, all states, and it's appropriate between these particular latitude and longitudinal ranges. So if we want to look up any of the others, we just search for the name of that transformation, find it in this document, and see where it's appropriate for. Now, there's a new thing that came out, well, new as of 10.1, so I guess it's been a little while, but it is pretty neat. It is the idea of compound transformations. Now, this means that you transform in multiple steps. And this is a good idea because if you consider that there's nearly a thousand different geographic coordinate systems, and if you want to be able to transform from any of those to any of those, well, that's a huge number of permutations. That's just a lot of transformations that you would have to create in order to make all those connections. So the solution is to pick some common transformation you can transform every one of them into that common transformation. WGS84 might be good. You could take any one of those geographic coordinate systems and transform it to WGS84. Well, that's just an intermediate step. So then you transform again to get to your destination geographic coordinate system. Maybe a two-step process, but by setting up this intermediate stage, you just hugely reduce the total number of transformations that you need to write from scratch. So it's a neat thing. Downside is it makes it a lot harder to look up what's the appropriate transformation when you have to. 
this NAD27 to WGS84 number 79, and then it transforms there from NAD27 to NAD83 NADCON. Well, you have to look at both of those to see if it's appropriate. And it's, it's tedious, but now you know how to do it, so it's not impossible. Okay, I think that's enough to cover in this video. And in the next video, we'll wrap up our discussion of projections and datums by learning about how to actually project your data into new coordinate systems. Now, this means to create brand new data sets in that new coordinate system. And we'll look at why you might want to do that and the tools available to you and some special issues with projecting raster data.